So we are going to pack a 16 millimeter china balls ball nut with new balls and the uh, screw itself I uh, you just disassemble them you take out the seals and they're held they're retained by two normally flathead but sometimes they're uh, Allen set screws take them out the seals just pop out uh, clean the clean the seals and then uh, dump everything dump the balls you're generally putting bigger balls in so you don't save them and then you have your returns and I put a little blob of grease on each one of the returns after I clean them so this is fast lane but you can use grease to uh, stop them from falling back out sometimes they fit loose sometimes they fit tight so we're going to and they line up they go in any place as far as there's three holes for three ball returns On the CNC kits that I sell for the 704 and PM25, I repack every ball screw with the largest balls that'll fit. So I've done quite a few of these. So the uh, returns are in. And so I have the new balls. I just put them in a cup. I'm using uh, Vaseline. Grease actually works better. It's stickier. But I get this on my hands every day, so I use Vaseline. And there's other ways to do it, guys. will run the screw in there in the middle and pop in the balls by turning the screw. Um, I never really liked that system so much. I don't know why. This is probably slower. So I do the side with the flange first, and I drop the first ball into the return first. That's just because I needed a starting point. <clears throat> and generally, you can, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a place between the two ball returns where there is no balls. It's only a little space. If a ball gets in there, it will cause the ball nut to jam. So when you're packing these, after you're all done packing, you probably won't be able to see it that well in the video. Um, you need to look inside the nut and make sure that the space between, there's three ball returns, but there's only two places where there's a void where no balls go. And before you screw the screw in there, you need to look to see if you have any balls in the the zone that's not supposed to have any balls. If there's a ball in there, the screw will most likely thread on, but then it'll jam going one direction or the other. Or the board will just be really rough. And you don't know what's going on, why it doesn't work right. So other than that, there's no real tricks. Um, balls can fall out while you put the screw in. And if they don't go into that void zone, they just fall out the end of the screw. It doesn't ruin everything. You're just missing a few balls. You don't have to have, I think there's 68 balls. Um, it's always nice to have them all the way full as far as that goes. I always fill them up all the way pretty much, but if you were to drop one ball or two or three, as um, long as you had like one ball per track, it wouldn't make any real difference. It affects the weight handling of the screw, but not how much backlash you have. Backlash is determined entirely by the fit. So I stuck one row in there, flipped the nut around. I'm going to start with the center row now. Same thing, they all have Vaseline on them. And we're just sticking them in there. Magnetic screwdriver is not a good idea. You better, oops, now see I just got one in, the, in that zone that you're not supposed to get them in. I can see it. I don't know if you can see it there. You just stuck one in the place where it's not supposed to go. So we're going to get that out and stick it in the right place. Pretty much do it one at a time, sometimes two, but pretty much one.
Now these balls might be too big. We're fitting the ball through. It's been this size ball has been working on a pretty good amount of them so far on this last batch of screws. Every batch of screws is different. So people always ask, well, what size do I need? And, I'm, and there's literally like a, almost a full thousandth or more of a range of balls that I fit into these to have them fit. So sometimes the screws are larger, sometimes or smaller, and sometimes the nuts are larger and smaller. So really it depends on what nut and what screw on how tight they fit up. And literally this week's screws have been this size. So now that row is full, so we're going to do the next row. And I haven't done this one yet, so I don't know. Normally for a video, you'd want to make sure it was going to be perfect and everything first. But uh, we're just going to wing it on this one to see. Some of them, the one ball nut I did earlier, I had to do six times before I got the right balls in it. I had to change nuts because I didn't have the exact right size for that nut and screw combination. So you want to get them... To get down to one or two thou, the nuts have to have a little bit of preload on them, which means they have to fit up just nice and tight, and that's just really quite hard to do sometimes. And I have a lot of balls. I have 10,000 balls sitting around, probably more. So we're just about done with the row number three. There's a little space there, so I can get one more ball in. So we will. Oop, that one popped out. Maybe not. Okay, yeah, we can't. So that one's extra. Sometimes it helps for a visibility purposes to run the tube up and just spin it and then take the tube back out again. That pushes the extra grease out of your view so you can look in and see where your balls are. So I'm checking the two void zones and they're clear but it looks like the one row can take one more ball so I'm going to stick one more ball in it. So we have three rows and everything's set. So now we're going to put it on the screw. First thing you do is you got to insert the tube and you know you have to watch it because it'll just push the balls out of the way as you put it in. So we have a tube in there now. <clears throat> this is the Y screw, which uh, on the 704 kit and the other kit, but you don't have to take the nut off on the PM25, there's a nipple that I have turned on the screw, which holds the plastic tube, which is good because it'll stop it from messing around. And you just push it on, you got to keep it straight, a little pressure on both. I don't know if I, I think I'm lucky on this one. Okay, well, what do you know? So, really, you need to spin it down the whole length of the screw and see if you have any spots that are too tight. You want to pit them, the balls. The uh, 570 ounce steppers are really quite strong, so you can waste a certain amount of the extra power you have from your stepper 
trying to turn a screw that's slightly stiff. So you can tolerate a little bit of, of it's good good reason to have bigger motors is you can tolerate um, a little bit extra drag on your ball nuts. So this one's not too bad. I'm not sure if I'll leave it or not. If you spin it and it keeps spinning all the way down the screw, it's too loose. You'll get, you know, who knows how much. It just means it's not anywhere tight. So this one, really, it's just about right. It, uh, if I spin it, it gives me like one turn, maybe two. So, and then I, pl I hold it like this and check it for play. If you can just feel side to side play, it's too loose. So this one actually looks like it's, it's, it's good. It'll probably give you about one thousandths play. So um, it depends kind of how it mounts up. But the uh, main thing is if you spin them, if you're holding them in this direction and spin them downhill, it should stop if the balls are tight, which it does. So that's probably the largest ball we can get in the screw, which is, this is the Y screw. And so I'll put the seals in. I'm not going to put the seals in now because they basically just, you just fuss around. Um, you put the, spin the screw, uh, seal down. Uh, the holes may or may not line up. If it doesn't line up, you flip the seal over, try it again. Um, and if not, you can actually just use like a little tool to punch a new hole in the seal for the set screws to hold it, which is fine. So uh, that's it. That's repacking the RM16 ball nut.